Okay, let's look at a uh, as simple as simple can be right triangle trig problem. So in a previous video, uh, I mentioned how when you're looking at right triangles and you're you're trying to solve them or trying to solve information about them, you have to be given two pieces of information. You have to be able to deduce at least two pieces of information. In this case, it's an angle and a side length. Okay, and after we after we establish the angle that's in the question that we can uh, that we can use, we got to establish what sides we're looking at. So we have this angle, right? Draw a line into the triangle, whichever side it hits, that's the opposite side. So here's our opposite side. We know the corner of the right triangle square points to the hypotenuse. So which means if that's the opposite side and that's the hypotenuse, then this is the adjacent side. So with respect to this angle, we have the opposite side and the adjacent side. And there's only one trig ratio which uses the opposite side and the adjacent side, and that's Soka Towa, right? So that means we're going to use the tangent function with the 40 degree angle, and that has to equal the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, which is 7. And then when we're solving for x, right, we're trying to undo the operations here with x, it's being divided by 7, we're going to multiply both sides by 7 here. Okay, so we get x equals, and I'm going to write this as 7 times the tangent of 40 degrees. And just a side note here, you know, at this point in the course, we've talked about logarithms. We talked about how logarithm, a logarithmic package represents a number. The same concept, the same property applies to tangents, okay? We can't operate on this number. So we're not multiplying 7 times 40 because it's inside this function here. Okay, so we have to treat this entire package of tan 40 as a singular number that we're going to multiply by. So this doesn't have any unknown values. We just have to calculate that. Okay, and I was able to get access to a TI Inspire software here that I can show you how this looks. The first thing I'll tell you about uh, using a TI Inspire calculator, I don't think I can make this. Let's see, can I make this bigger? I can't. Look at that. Good job, technology. First thing I'll tell you about a TI Inspire, when you go to the home screen or the on button, okay, uh, we're gonna do everything. We're, not, we're gonna avoid the scratch pad because there's things, uh, there's, there's uh, operations here that we can't necessarily use and see. So we're gonna start a new document. So we're gonna click new. We never really wanna save what we're working on for what we're doing. And we're gonna do a calculator. So we're gonna add a new calculator document, okay, in here. Now, the first thing you want to do, anytime you're doing anything at all with trigonometry, the first thing you want to do is go to the document that you're in. So this doc button right here, okay? And then you want to go to option seven, which is settings and status, and go to document settings, okay? So the doc button, option seven for document, for settings and status, and then option two for document settings. Now, Take a look at here. The float, not not necessarily a big deal. Okay, float six. I, I'm just going to put it at float. That gives uh, you the most number of decimal uh, places after after the decimal point. What we want to focus on here is this. Okay, we are only going to deal in radians and degrees, and depending on the scenario, will depend on what mode we want to be in. But since obviously the angle here is in degrees, we want to click on degree mode. Now, you may have a button on your calculator that says make default. I encourage you to always just push that button, okay? Later on in the unit, we're going to go to radian mode, okay? So we'll do that when we need to. Just understand that anytime you're doing trigonometry, you got to understand, are we, in, are we dealing with radians or degrees? If we're dealing with degrees, we need to be in degree mode, okay? So now I'm just going to click OK, and you can type this in here, 7. And then all your trig stuff, it's kind of hard to see on my screen, but you might see it right next to the seven button is the trig button. So if you click that, all of your trigonometric ratios show up, all six of the ratios here and all of their inverses below. We're doing uh, tangent, right? Sorry, the tangent of 40 degrees. Hit enter, you get seven point and then round that to whatever place value you'd like, okay? Uh, if you're using a, a Chromebook or something, well, you don't have this software, so you won't be able to do that. You'll be using the calculator itself, okay? So just make sure it's in degree mode when you're working with degrees, okay? And then all of your trig options are right here within this sub-menu, okay? 
Uh, if you're going to do it in Desmos, okay, you change the mode by going over here to the to where the wrench is. If you click the wrench, okay, you can see down here toggle between degrees and radians. Okay, so if we're in degrees here, we would type 10, 7 times the tangent of 40. We get the same answer, five, approximately 5.87, and we'll just go with that. Okay, so for this value of x, we get approximately 5.87. All right.